Hi, I'm Marius from Inways Photography. Welcome back to part two of our review on the FlashKey wireless flash triggering system. Okay, now in the previous video, we unboxed the set to see which goodies awaited for us in the box. In this video, we're gonna have a closer look at the units itself, how they work, um, some technical specs on them. And in the next video, the one you don't wanna miss is our shoot, our two light setup shoot, where I'll be taking a picture of these uh, multi-colored peppers and we'll be changing the background color with one of our flashes from green to blue and I'll show you how that works so don't miss the next episode but before we go there let's first just have a closer look at the units and how they work okay now to use them it's really very simple they're nice and tiny perfect for my Fuji X-T1 they also work perfectly fine on your SLR as well um, they just slip in place on the camera they don't fall out um, they don't need a lock so they're not heavy that they're gonna drop out, so it's perfectly fine. So once you've locked it in place there, your transmitting side is done. Then you also do the same with your flashes. I just locked them in place on these stands. Now to turn the unit on, on your transmitter, if you hold the power button down for three seconds and you'll see all these multicolored flashing happening, that's telling you the unit has turned on. You do the same with your flashes. You hold it in for three seconds, you will see the multiple colored lights flashing, telling you they are on. Now, when you want to turn them off, you also hold the power button for three seconds. But the weird thing is then you get a green light telling you it's off. Weird. I would expect a red light to tell you, no, it's turned off. Don't use anymore because green usually means go. So that's a bit strange. I would have actually preferred if they made it red. It would have made more sense. But if you look at the manual, you'll see it when you turn it off, press it for three seconds, the light goes green and the unit turns off. Okay, so very easy to turn it on and off. And then the nice thing is the units already come paired. They're already synced to the unit. You don't need to pair them up and change the channels. I'll talk about the channels soon, but the unit has already been set up. So when I press the test button, you'll see those flashes firing. You most probably will not see them on the video. You'll only see this burst of light because the flash goes off faster than the video can record it. So, but you can see those units are syncing. Um, Okay, so basically once you've set up your lights, you've turned on all the units and everything is on here, your flashes are ready to go. Um, like I said, very easy and straightforward to use. Now in the next video, I'll, I'll be talking about the settings when we do the shoot. Let's first just have a look at the technical specs because there might be some stuff that bothers you that might make you not buy the system. Okay, so included in the box was this little um, manual which has all the technical specs on. Now, it, like most of, the, of your units, it's running on 2.4 gigahertz. Now, very important, the 160 radio channels. Now, the units already came paired in the box. So this was already synced to these units. It was, it was basically set up and go. I didn't need to do anything. You can, if you buy more units, there, at the back there is a process that you sync the units together again. If you buy more units, you can, maybe if you've got three flashes or four flashes, you can add the extra flashes and just buy more units. So then you have to run that session again to pay up all the flashes. I'm not gonna worry about it because mine already came like that out of the box. Okay, so the 160 radio channels is if someone else is also using the system and you are triggering each other's units, you can change your channels to something else. Now, normally on my other units, I, it was either on the menu that you change it on the unit or it maybe had a dip switch or something. This, you don't have any switches, which is actually kind of cool. Everything is just, there's just power on and test. There's nothing else you need to worry about. So just know you can change channels if someone else is also triggering your units. Um, Okay, the next one is something that might bother some people. Now there's only a 10 meter operating range. So you need to ask yourself, how far are you away from your flashes when you are taking pictures? Are you more than 10 meters away? Because then this might become a problem. Maybe you're doing um, sports where your flashes are maybe like 30, 40, 50 meters away from you. Then the system won't really work that well. Um, I've tested it to around test meet, uh, 10 meters here in the studio and outside and worked perfectly fine. So for my type of work, the 10 meter range really doesn't bother me. But if you go over 10 meters, just know you might run into problems. I think the reason it's not as much as my other units is the size, because obviously the antenna they need to put in this thing must be really tiny. So I'm guessing that's what's limiting the range is maybe a very small antenna on the inside of a unit. Okay, then the next one is no TTL, which really I'm not bothered about at all. Um, I usually turn off the TTL function anyway and work in manual only. 
unless I've got my flash on top of my camera, then I'll obviously use TTL. But otherwise, I want to know if there's a flash there and that flash is on half power, it must stay on half power until I go change it to maybe 8 or 16 power. I don't want the, the camera to do the settings for me. So I'm very happy with that. And then the sync speed is up to 250th for my studio work, my off-camera um, location shoots. That's perfectly fine for me. So you need obviously to look at what your camera can handle because some cameras can only do 160th, others can do 200, 250. It will depend on your camera model. Um, if you don't know what sync speed is, I'm talking about it a little bit in the next video when I talk about doing the settings for that specific shoot I'll be doing. I will be talking a little bit about sync speeds because if you've been taking pictures and you're getting these black bars on your image, that's what happens when you shoot too fast. Okay, then it says here you can get more than 100,000 fires from your battery life. I have no idea. I will see eventually, but obviously I'm not counting my flash fires. So that I don't know. And then the, the battery should last you about six months. I don't know. I basically just got them. Um, I've only done a few shoots with them so far. Okay, so also on your manual is your little operation summary, like I said in the previous video as well, which will have all the details as to what happens when you press what button. Like for instance, also when you pair up the automatic channel selection, it explains that on here as well. Okay, then the build quality of these units. I must say they are really very strong. I'm really impressed with them. They really look very good on my camera and they feel, the plastic feels solid. But something that's very important, if you take into account the size of this thing, it's really very small. So, and you can also unhook this thing at the bottom, which I don't think I will be doing that much. You can take your hot shoe clip thing off and it, it has the same look and feel as this. But I'll keep this on perf permanently because it's just a little bit larger for me to hold onto the unit because it's so small. So this is just plastic, everything here. So imagine you want to have this flash against a wall or something and, you're, and you've got your stand coming up here with the head and you're hanging this entire very heavy speed light off this piece of plastic. Obviously that's not recommended. So it's still plastic. So just be careful what weight you put on it because I wouldn't really strain it too much. Um, otherwise, I can't really complain about the unit itself. It fits nicely on my stands. I like the, um, the tripod mount there, so I can put it either into a tripod or I can slip it into this cold shoe for my, for my light stand, so that is awesome. As so overall build, build quality, can't really complain about them. So conclusion-wise, who would I recommend this to? Basically anyone, you just need to decide on what you um, are going to do about with them, basically. Another thing that also will maybe determine how, uh, if you will use them or not, is they recycle a little bit slow. So if I press the test button and I press it fast, you'll notice I'm pressing it very quickly here, but the flashes has a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a delay in between the flashes. So some of my other units can go pretty fast. So if you fire a lot, you might miss a few shots here and there. You might miss a few shots. But I'm doing studio work, um, products, um, photography, um, weddings, on location shoots. So usually there's a time in between each shot. So I don't really miss anything. So for me, that really isn't a problem. And then obviously the distance, that is the two things I think people will look into is that little bit of a delay when you shoot very fast and then also the range that might be a problem for some. But the size and what they can do and the price range, basically anyone who's interested in a system like this can go for it. There's no real drawback so far. Like I said, I haven't had these units for months and did 100 shoots on them. They are still pretty new for me, but I haven't really had that much of a drawback or problem with them. So yeah, you know, just ask yourself, is distance a problem? is that f speed a problem? And obviously you won't be able to go over your, um, your sync speed. So if you are a professional photographer and you like to go to hyperspeed sync on your flashes, like you can do with your pocket wizards, you won't be able to do it with these units. So that's also something you need to look into. Like on my pocket wizard system, I could shoot up to 8,000 of a second if I want to, there's no problem with that. But also look at the price difference between um, that and this big price difference. So yeah, nothing I can really complain about at this time. I really like them. Um, I think they're well made and I will enjoy using them, especially if you look at the size when I stack them, look at how small they are. 
um, when I have it on my hand. So keeping this into my in my camera bag is going to take this amount of space right there in the corner. So I'm going to enjoy keeping this with me when I travel with my Fuji um, system because I usually take two of these bodies and my lenses with me in a, in a, in a bag. So it's going to be a real nice addition to my bag. So that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, you want to see more videos like these, then what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button and get all my awesome episodes as I release them. And then I'll see you in the next episode, which you don't want to miss, where I'll show you a two light setup with these um, flash Q units. Bye.